Okay, let's just dive right in. If you're into home labbing, you have definitely had this moment. You stumble across something like the Proxmox helper scripts, you run one little command, and poof, a super complex service is just up and running. It feels a little bit like you're cheating, and honestly, it's awesome. I mean, this just nails it, right? You run a single command, and before your coffee's even lukewarm, you've deployed a whole media server, or a password manager, the whole shebang, and you're just sitting there thinking, where has this been all my life? And that's really what they are, aren't they? They're the easy button. These scripts just totally flatten the learning curve. They make discovering new apps fun again, because you get to skip all the boring setup and jump straight to the good part, actually playing with the software. But after that initial rush, that, that high wears off, a little question starts to creep in. You start seeing the warnings in forums, right? The cautionary tales from the seasoned pros. And that excitement starts to turn into a little bit of uncertainty. So what do you do now? And that's where we get to the real heart of the matter. The thing is, these scripts are two things at the exact same time. They are unbelievably convenient tools, for sure. But they're also a potential risk to your system stability, to its security. You've got to understand both truths. You'll see this phrase dropped everywhere and it's treated like a live wire for a reason, curl pipe bash. All it means is you're downloading a script from some corner of the internet and instantly running it as root without even looking at it first. It is the ultimate trust fall for your server. Now, what's so wild about this is that both of these columns are 100% true at the exact same time. The promise, it's real. You get speed, you get to discover all this cool stuff, but the peril is just as real. That black box install can create security holes you don't even know about, and it can leave you totally stranded when an update breaks something. It's not about picking a side. It's about understanding the trade-off you're making. This is probably the single best piece of advice you're going to get on this. I love this quote. Think of these scripts as a way to get going, right? To learn your balance, to explore the neighborhood. But they are not meant to be the final vehicle, not for your really important services. So, okay, if they're training wheels, how do we actually use them that way? Well, that brings us to a real practical strategy, using these scripts for what they're best at, which is safe discovery. Think of it like a guided tour, helping you figure out if an app is even worth your time in the first place. And I love this analogy. You're not marrying this application. You're not getting it tattooed on your server for life. You're just trying it out. Is this photo app actually any good? Does this network recorder do what I need it to do? Use the script to get a fast yes or no before you put in any real work. And here's the game plan, laid out step by step. First, and look, this one is not optional, use a throwaway VM, a demo node. Keep your experiments isolated. Second, you always, always take a snapshot before you run a single thing. It is your magical undo button. Third, just mentally label this thing as a trial. And finally, if after a week or two you're like, wow, I actually love this thing, that's your cue to rebuild it the right way for keeps. So, before you hit enter on any script, just run through this little safety checklist in your head. Is it piping some random script straight to your root shell? Is it then calling other remote scripts that you haven't even seen? Does it try to set up auto-updates behind your back? And maybe most important of all, did you at least give the code a quick once-over? And is your snapshot ready to go? If you hesitate on any of these, just pause. Okay, now this, this is where the journey gets really fun. Once you've used scripts to find the apps you genuinely love, the next step is to level up. It's about moving from being a user of somebody else's magic to becoming the owner of your own automation. You hear these names, Ansible, Packer, Terraform, thrown around all the time, and they can sound super intimidating, but their jobs are actually dead simple. Ansible's whole job is to say, hey server, I need you to look exactly like this. Packer's job? to bake a perfect reusable template image. Cloud init is what customizes that template the very first time it boots up. And Terraform, that lets you describe your entire setup, all your VMs and networks, just as code. So here's the crucial takeaway. It doesn't really matter if you pick Ansible or Salt or some other tool. That's not the point. The goal, the real goal, is to move your installations from this mysterious one-click process to a simple, readable piece of code that you actually own and understand. And listen, I know what some of you are thinking, because I've been there. I tried Ansible once, got completely lost, and ran away screaming. It's a totally normal, super relatable feeling. You open it up, you see these giant, complex examples, and you just feel completely overwhelmed. It's a classic stumbling block. The secret? Start ridiculously small. 
Forget about deploying some massive, complex application. Just write a tiny, maybe 20-line playbook that does one simple, useful thing. Like, maybe it just updates all your containers and reboots them. That one small win is what builds the momentum you need to tackle the bigger stuff later. All right, enough theory, let's make this real. Here is a weekend mission, a concrete plan that will take you from being a passive script user to an active owner of your own setup. Okay, so Saturday is all about discovery and capture. In the morning, you're gonna have some fun. On your test VM, use those helper scripts to spin up two apps you've been curious about. Poke around, see how they work, take a few notes. Then in the afternoon, you switch gears. Pick the one you like the most, and your mission is to capture it. Just write a tiny Ansible playbook that deploys its official Docker Compose file. And to wrap up the day, you'll rebuild it on a fresh VM, but this time using your own playbook. Now, Sunday is all about building your foundation. This is the part that pays off big time. You're going to create a golden VM template. You can use Packer if you're feeling fancy, or honestly, just do it by hand. A clean Debian or Ubuntu server is perfect. Get it set up just right with the basics. Cloud in it, your SSHT, all the latest updates. Then you convert that into a reusable Proxmox template. The grand finale, clone your brand new template, run Saturday's playbook against it, and watch the magic happen. And what's the result of all this? Think about it. By Sunday night, you still get that done before the coffee is cold speed for deploying your favorite apps, but now it's not a mystery. It's code that you wrote, code that you understand, and code you can repeat perfectly every single time. And that right there, that is the balance. Use helper scripts to Windows shop. Let them help you explore this massive world of self-hosted software super fast, but when you find something great, something you want to keep, Invest a little time to make it truly yours with code that you control. Because ultimately, this is the entire goal, to move past relying on someone else's magic and instead build a home lab based on code that you can actually explain. Trust me, the first time you redeploy one of your core services with a single command that you wrote and it just works, you'll feel that exact same rush you did when you first found the helper scripts. Only this time, you're the one holding the map.